um, um, I saw it in action one evening and I was just absolutely blown away. I think it was the bread rolls that got me. Um, we whipped up these bread rolls in about two minutes and an hour later we had a set on the table alongside a full main meal, uh, a broccoli salad um, and a frozen fruit sorbet. Couldn't believe it. Loved it. Um, so that's me. I'm going to hand over. I'm just going to uh, ask my team to introduce themselves one by one. So let's first of all go over to Cutty. Can I just ask one question quickly? Yes, please. Who's doing? that? Oh, that's Claire. Uh, it's yes. me. Am I recording to the cloud or to my computer? Yeah, record to the cloud. Please. Perfect, that's what I'm doing, perfect. Yeah, okay, let's go to Cutty. So Claire, hopefully she'll be able to spotlight Cutty. Hi, hang on, um, continue. Hi, I'm Cutty. Um, I've been working for Thermomix for five months now. Um, I bought one for my husband back in December and basically just blew my mind. Um, I used to ride horses, I couldn't cook, I had zero confidence in cooking, and I had no inspiration. And discovering with Thermix, I found it all, and I found I can now cook. And um, I just love it now, and I'm cooking every day. It, there's never a day go by where I, don't, where, where I don't use it. So that's me. And that was your husband's Christmas or birthday present, I should point out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, he did he, very well out of that, really. I know. We still share it. Um, he still loves cooking in it, um, particularly the curries on a Saturday night. And he does his pizza yeah. dough and everything in it. So, and his marinades. Yeah, and yeah, Brilliant. we both love it. It's changed. It has changed our lives, I have to say. <laughs> Yay. Right, let's go to Michaela now. Hello lovelies, Michaela, Duchess of Arundel here. Um, so I've been an advisor now coming up a year. In fact, actually, I think it's my year anniversary this month. So God, that went around so quickly. I'm actually, I can't cook. I didn't used to cook much. I was a very busy IT consultant and really fallen into very bad ways of eating processed foods, takeaways, ready-made meals. And um, I'd never heard of Thermix until accidentally uh, Lindsay ended up hosting in my kitchen. And I just knew I had to have it from that spot, that moment on. Um, since becoming a customer, I have halved my monthly shopping bill. I have transformed our family diet. I've never felt so healthy and in the best shape ever even though I'm older <laughs> and um, it's just transformed our entire life right down to my son who's 12 cooking family meals too. So uh, welcome and I hope you enjoy it. Great and um, let's go over to Taruna now. Hello and um, I'm really new to uh, Thermomix this is my second month and um, I joined after watching Lindsay doing all these different demos and I'm a passionate cook anyway and for me, um, some of my gadgets were getting old and, you know, needed to go to the to the bin. And I thought, I don't want to buy more gadgets because I'm called the gadget woman in my family. And when I heard about the Thermomix and I could have one thing that has multifunctions, it was the ideal thing to have in my kitchen. And my husband's really pleased because he hates having all these gadget gadgets sitting on the worktops. And honestly, since I've had it, I've made so many things in it, even more than I normally do, because I cook from scratch anyway. Um, and I really love it. I enjoy it. And I do spend some evenings when I've got spare five minutes finding recipes on Cookie Do and saving them so I can make them later. So that's me. You're hooked like the rest of us. It's great to hear. OK, let's go over to Linda very quickly. Linda there. Ah, oh, there she is. Oh, Linda, you're on mute. Lovely. <laughs> Hold on a second. Oh, I've That's been it. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, can hear you. Okay. Sorry. Right. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm Linda Taylor, um, and this is my uh, debut uh, demo. Um, I live in Norfolk. Um, I bought a Thermomix uh, a few months ago. Um, and even though I just cooked myself since um, my husband passed away, I use my Thermomix every single day. Um, I follow what's called a primal diet. Um, and to explain about that, that means that I don't include grains, sugars, starchy veg or anything processed in my diet. 
Um, and the Thermomix has allowed me to widen my menu, menu options and made cooking from scratch so simple and easy. Um, I, make, I make things that I never would have thought that I would make before. So, yeah, um, I'm loving it. Absolutely loving it. Brilliant. And then finally, if we've got Nicola back yet, is Nicola there? Yes, hello. Hi, hi, I'm Nicola. Um, I bought a Thermix through Michaela after a demo um, about a year ago and then became um, an advisor a few months later, I guess. Um, I already love cooking and quite enjoyed a lot of what I did. Um, but this has just allowed me to shift up a gear, shift the variety up and take less time doing it. So it's sort of a win-win all round. Um, and now I just feel like um, I want everyone I know and love to have one because it's just a game changer in the kitchen. Um, I love exploring new recipes. I love just experimenting, but also doing old favourites as well because everything is available. So it's just fantastic for the kit. So everyone should have Brilliant. one. <laughs> Yay! We like that. And actually our general manager's uh, vision is to have every Thermomix, uh, every home in the UK with a Thermomix in it by 2025. <laughs> So big plans. Uh, but anyway, we're delighted to have you with us this evening. I'm just going to very quickly run through the features of the Thermomix. So this is a demo. This is designed for people that don't have a Thermomix yet. They're interested in finding out what it can do. Um, I am just going to... Can you hear the TV behind me? Are you OK? Because of course the TV's on now with Wimbledon. I'm just going to mute that and turn it off, actually. I just love children. There we go. Right, turn my TV off. Um, yes, yeah, so this, this is designed as a demo. So it's just for people who are interested in finding out a little bit more about the machine, what it can do. Um, so we're just gonna run through the functions very quickly and run through what the Thermomix is. So, um, and, and why it's different to sort of other devices out there. So um, I look at Thermomix as a bit of a smart food processor. So it's connected to the internet, but it's not just a food processor that, um, uh, chops and sort of grinds and sort of blends and does all that kind of stuff it also heats uh, and therein is lies its complete uniqueness um that uh, and it means as well while you're cooking you can be afford to be completely hands-free because it will heat it will temperature control and it will stir for you as well so it's essentially a food processor but it's got access to this amazing screen which you'll see lit up on the front um, to about 70,000 recipes. I don't know what my dog is doing, but he's barking. I'm just going to shut the door so I don't hear him. Um, it's got access to about 70,000 recipes from all around the world. And the recipes are delivered to you on this touch screen, this interactive touch screen. And they literally walk you through that cooking process step by step. And so this is why I feel some people think, oh, well, it's not for them because it kind of de-skills cooking. But it de-skills it in a really good way because it's ideal for busy people. Um, and actually, you know, I love to cook. There's probably you'll find nobody that's more passionate about food than me, although I think some of my team members will give me a good run for my money in that respect. Um, I love cooking. Um, I would quite happily spend all day long in the kitchen, but I don't have the time. But the Thermomix allows me to do all the cooking that I want to just in the shorter space of time. So I, I cook a lot smarter more quickly which suits me down to the ground and besides you know I, I i gave up years ago trying to make a hollandaise from scratch i don't need to bother now i've got one of these it'll do it for me in eight minutes i mean I, it, life is just a little bit too short to stand there over a bamboo stirring and whisking um and, and then cursing uh, when at the last minute it splits so let me just take you um down and show you the functions on the screen because i do just want to spend a couple of minutes um, going through that so if you can see my screen so if i just go back to my home dial this is the home screen. Uh, so this is good for new owners to um, sort of think about this. So we've got time, temperature and speed. And if you think about cooking, it's always a combination of those three elements. How long you cook something for, how, uh, what sort of temperature you, you use and um, how quickly or not you stir something. So that's, that's what, what we call our home screen. If we swipe across, we've got functions. So this is why the Thermomix is about 25 different appliances in one, because you do not need to have all these separate pieces of kit anymore lying around your kitchen. You can use it in its own right as a set of weighing scales. And this is one of my favorite features of this Thermomix is that it's got inbuilt scales. So you don't need to faff around finding something to weigh on a pot, so some scales, um, and then have all the sort of the dirty bowls afterwards that you need to clean up because everything is done in the Thermomix. Um, the turbo function is a bit like a pulse and a food processor, great for grinding flour, chopping nuts, 
uh, grinding up coffee. It cleans itself, yay. That's often one of the customer's favorite functions. You can use it as a blender, it boils eggs. The egg boiler is magic. So you can determine to the, the sort of the, the, near, the nearest second actually, um, how you want your yolks. So whether they are um, soft, medium, soft, firm, hard or hard boiled, absolute game changer. You can warm up your leftovers in it. You can thicken uh, sauces. So that is what would come on typically if you were making a gravy or a hollandaise or a bechamel sauce. Um, you can use it as a rice cooker. You can ferment yogurt in it and do your fermentation, other fermentation um, in it. You can use it as a slow cooker and you can sous vide with it. I'm not going to spend any, any um, longer going through what sous vide is all about because that is something that I cover in my um, virtual induction for new customers. So if we've got any new customers, and I know we've got some new customers on the call, so please feel free to join me uh, next Tuesday where we will be looking in detail at all these different functions. But just for now, you know that they're there. Now, the great thing about this machine is that it is, it's personalized to you. So this is pulling for data from Cookie Do. Now, so Cookie Do is a bit like our search engine for recipes, something like, uh, like a Google search or the BBC Good Food um, uh, website. So you can put um, ingredients that you have or sort of dishes that you want to cook. You can search for nearly 70,000 recipes and find something to cook. So if I just put in here, search Cookie Do, if I just put in, um, I don't know, I'm going to put in um, chicken. Uh, just very quickly in there. Click on search. This is exactly how it would appear if you were looking at it on the app um, or on a tablet or a website, but it's just, you, you can search now um, on the screen directly. So it's found nearly a thousand recipes with chicken. You can scroll down. They're all beautifully laid out and think, oh, that sounds really nice. Chicken tagine with prunes and figs. Right, I'm going to click on that. Loads the recipe have a quick look what's involved all the steps all the ingredients and then I can click start cooking so there we go so and it will just start walking me through it step by step so it's going to ask me to weigh in some onions now you'll notice I take the lid off if I just reset my scales to zero by pressing that green tear button I can weigh directly into the Thermomix which is just one of the best features it's such a time-saving feature it's really clever um, and it will save on a lot of washing up and mess at the end um, of, of the, when you cook. So that is one of the guided recipes. I just want to show you very quickly, we've got this amazing ability to plan um, the food that you want to cook. Um, so today, for example, I've put all the recipes already. I'm not cooking all of these, thank goodness. My team are helping me out with that. We're gonna do one each, so it's a little bit more interesting from you and you get to snoop around lots of people's kitchens as well. Um, but we've got um, everything that we want to cook today has gone into the planner. So the advantage of this is um, you can plan out your food and what you want to cook a week in advance, a month in advance, longer if you want to. Um, and from there, from your planner, you can then add ingredients to your, or add recipes to the shopping list rather, and then you can edit and amend that shopping list, and then you can sync it with your online shopping provider. So all you've really got to do is think about what you want to cook. The Thermomix will order all your ingredients for you. It gets delivered to your door. You just have to put them away, get them out again when you want to cook your uh, meal, and then the Thermomix cooks it for you. So it just streamlines the whole process from start to finish. Um, and as you can see, have I got, no, I haven't got anything. I'm not a great planner, I have to say, but my customers all tell me they love um, this feature because it enables them to save lots of money because you actually only buy what you are going to use. Okay, so that's the weekly planner. And then on here, you see I've got my recipes stored. So I've got some collections which are created. So these are folders of recipes um, that are, that you can collect together. So you can just tag recipes into folders through Cookie Do. So I've got lots of chicken recipes together. So sorry to sort of labor the point, but if I go into my chicken folder, so these are recipes that I have found. I think, oh, that looks good. I'd like to save that. So they're all in one place and really easy to navigate and find. So that's the creative collections. And then I've got saved collections. So these are, oh, let's come back a little bit. These are um, recipe books that um, Thermomix put together. They range from sort of short collections of 10 to 12 recipes up to um, sort of 60 odd, 60 to 80 recipes in a book. So here's an around Asia one, for example. I don't think I've ever clicked on that. 
Um, and all the recipes that are in this particular collection will then appear on your screen. So again, if you want to um, use one of them, all you do is click on it and it loads the recipe directly onto your screen. And you'll be amazed. It's so much easier and quicker to follow a recipe when it's on the screen than it is in a cookie book. You don't have to think about where you've got up to. You can just, the thermo is doing the work. It's remembering where it's got up to. I've got customers that love it because they can do sort of tag team cooking. So one of them starts and then the husband or partner or whoever it is uh, takes over. They don't have to spend ages explaining where they've got up to in the recipe, what step they're at. They can go off, do something else, go out and walk the dog, sit down, have a shower, whatever it is, do some work. And the other person can then take over um, and there's no handover required because the Thermomix will just walk that next person through that particular recipe. So it really just makes cooking a much more sort of mindful, easy, less stressful experience because you haven't got to remember it all in your head. You've got a sous chef here prompting you um, and, and helping you uh, at talking you through all the steps, which is really handy. Um, and then you can bookmark recipes as well. So that's the sort of the final piece you can bookmark um, as well. So these are your these are your favourites, which are all um, together in a folder. If we've got time, I will run through um, Cookie Do properly if we've got some cooking segments. But that is a whirlwind guide to Cookie Do. Now, I just um, I'm going to hand over, I think, to uh, Sarah to get us started. Um, and because Sarah's going to start the satay chicken um, that we're going to do. So this is the main meal of the evening. So you have to bear with us. We are going to sort of fly around different kitchens because it's much more interesting to see something else being cooked than it is to watch a Thermomix um, steam chicken for 10 minutes or so. So let's hand over to Sarah um, and she can introduce the first part of the recipe. Hi, can you hear me okay? Um, okay. Um, I'm making the uh, easy satay chicken. Um, I've already done the dried fennel seeds, half a tablespoon of that, half a tablespoon of the cumin seeds, one tablespoon of coriander seeds, and one tablespoon, one teaspoon, sorry, of coriander seeds, one tablespoon of turmeric. I have browned that for 30 seconds. I've done that already. And the ginger, garlic, and two chilies. Again, with a chip, with the garlic, you can throw it in whole, doesn't matter. So we're now on the next, next step of the tamar tamarari sauce, which is a soy sauce, the tamarind pulp, the oyster sauce. Let's put that in, because I've got all those in there together. The dark brown sugar. I've just used normal sugar there. And then the coconut cream. It says 270, but I know these are about 260 um, packets. I'm sure you can make your own coconut cream in the Thermomix. You have to correct me on that one. And then the peanut butter, which I made earlier. I love making peanut butter um, because it is just basically peanuts. Um, there's no added anything. The peanuts have enough oil in. And um, so just, you don't even need to add oil or anything. Um, it's just literally ground peanuts. So I'm now going to put the lid on. And that's going to cook now for three minutes on 90 degrees. I just wanted to talk you through. I've turned it on and it's a speed one. Um, the tamarind pulp is slightly different. I've used tamarind paste. They taste about the same, but um, <clears throat> the pulp is straight from the pod. And it has a slightly fresher taste. where well, the paste has been taken off the seed and processed. Um, but the difference is minimal. And the tamari sauce, um, the tamari soy sauce, that's naturally gluten free because it's had no wheat added to it. And it's a slightly thicker consistency. So that's the difference between those things we're using here. But I have used the paste because I couldn't find any of the pulp. Um, the tamarind tam 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 pulp. <laughs> I'm not used to these words. I've never cooked before. <laughs> I'm learning all these it. different things, and that's what I love about it. Um, yeah. Just learning about all these different foods and these different pulps and seeds and everything, and finding out how good they are for you. And the no process, you know, the, the less processed food. So this yeah, is going to be great for two minutes. So so. It's going to 
cook for another two minutes. So I'm going to take over. So Claire, if you could spotlight me and then I'm going to do some bread. Um, so I actually I feel really bad now because I forgot to introduce our honorary team member, that's Claire. So Claire, would you mind um, just popping yourself onto spotlight and just saying a few words about yourself? Because I know you've got some customers on the call um, and you are a part of our team, even though you're not an official part of our team. But we met through social media. We developed a great relationship. And this is, again, one of the joys of Thermomix, isn't it? It's, the, it's ability to bring people together. If only you'd said, I'd have tidied up behind me. So pretend that there's a virtual screen here and you can't actually see the mess. Um, yeah, I love these demos because these are just keeping it real demos with, you know, children walking in and husbands outside and um, just cooking and having fun with the best kitchen uh, bit of machinery ever invented, in my opinion. And can I just add, um, if anyone's got any questions, just put them in the chat. Otherwise, it's just going to be me typing away any random things. As I already we have. love Claire's <laughs> contribution. She's so funny. So we'll definitely have to get you involved. So yes, please involve Claire. Ask lots of questions um, and keep Claire busy. <laughs> okay, right. So I'm going to do the Parmesan and um, rosemary rolls. Now, I have a bit of a confession to make that I have not made these before, but that's fine because actually that is the whole uh, purpose of the Thermomix, that it's brilliant for people that don't know how to cook, um, don't have time to cook, that the food is guaranteed restaurant quality as long as you follow the instructions step by step. Um, and you don't do anything daft, you don't substitute ingredients, then you are guaranteed the same consistent result every time you use it. So, um, so that's why I'm not worried actually about doing a recipe that I haven't done before, because I know it's been triple tested by all of our um, professional chefs and it will do, it, it will work in exactly the way it's supposed to. So I've got some dough here ready to go because um, I want to show you how to shape the rolls. But what I'm going to do first of all is just walk you through the process. Can you see my screen there? There's quite a lot of glare coming off of it, but hopefully you can see it. So I'm just going to click start cooking. Um, so let's just put that recipe on. Now it's asking, I'm going to halve the recipe actually because I'm, um, I don't need lots and lots of rolls coming out my ears. We have loads of stuff going through this kitchen every day. So um, although my neighbours are always very happy to receive everything I cook, uh, a lot happier than my children, I hasten to add. Um, it's asking me to put in 50 grams of Parmesan cheese. So I'm just going to halve that. And the interesting thing here with the Parmesan um, is there's absolutely no waste with Parmesan. She said, if I can find my Parmesan, because you can actually grind the rinds on the Parmesan as well. You don't just need to, you don't um, need to waste the rinds. A lot of people throw them away. I used to save them incidentally and add them sort of to soups and stews, but invariably I'd forget and they just sit in my... Um, fridge until I decided that they'd probably been sat there for a bit too long so I'd better get rid of them but now I just cut them all up put them in the Thermomix um I know I said I'd halve the recipe and those if you can see my screen that's not half but it's fine because I'm just going to grate up all my parmesan um and then pop it into a tub like this so parmesan's gone in click on next oh, it wants me to put some rosemary in now although I have put the rosemary into this dough I'm not going to put the rosemary into this dough because knowing my children um the slight the, the, if they get a whiff that there's something a, a little bit slightly different to usual they won't eat it um so I'm just gonna grind other parmesan it's gonna make a bit of a noise that it will take slightly longer when I put the rinds into it but it should be passable actually now I'll show you what happens there you go so you've got grated parmesan in there and again I mean this is a bit of a money saver actually because um the grated parmesan is always more expensive to buy uh proportionally and also it tends to use poorer quality ingredients um so uh, a lot a lot of the rind actually whereas when you buy blocks of parmesan you get the real deal. You get the whole cheese, um, which is much better quality. So I'm just going to pop that aside in my tub. So yeah, as Claire said, it's loads cheaper to grind your own parmesan. Right. So it does. It even tells me. So if you can see, it tells me to transfer to a bowl and set aside. So it's walking you through the step by step. It's so simple. Even children can use it. And when we first got up, when I first bought my own Thermomix, 
um, about three years ago, my eldest was then 11 and he was making restaurant quality curries from scratch at 11 years old, grinding and toasting his own spices and making his own curry paste. Now there aren't many 11 year olds that can do that. Um, okay, so now it's gonna ask me to put in the rest of the ingredients. So I'm gonna put some water in. Um, It'd be really good to, to know where you're all from, actually. So while I'm um, weighing this out, if you want to pop in the chat where people are from, always love to, to see where we reach in the UK. So I'm going to half the recipe here. Um, so I'm going to put in 100 grams of water. So do say hi in the chat and where you're from. So that's my 100 grams. You can see my scales have weighed it. It's going to ask me for a little bit of milk. So I tell all my team to get my ingredient, their ingredients to hand, and then I forget myself. I'm just going to drop in a little bit of milk, so 30 grams, okay, then a little bit of sugar, which has done a disappearing act, my husband loves tidying up and trying to trip me up on these demos, so I'm just going to shake in a little bit of sugar, click on next, half a teaspoon of dried yeast, <clears throat> and this is all, this is, the, the machine is telling me, um, to shh, Daniel, the machine is telling me uh, exactly what to do. So uh, we've lost our two year old. Let's hope she's somewhere in the house. And um, that's what all the noise is about. <laughs> it's a shame I haven't lost the rest of them actually. <laughs> I don't mind the two. Try, try your larder cupboard. Bet she's in there emptying it. <laughs> and now, great. When, yes, one of my sons is now calling me. Why he would choose now to call me from upstairs is quite frankly beyond me. There we go. Right, now what it wants me to do is put the lid on um, and, and sort of heat it up and mix it all together. Let me show you that. So these are my dials. So I've got three minutes, 37 degrees, speed two. Do you know what? I've made so much bread. I know I can just throw everything in um, together. And actually my really quick pizza dough recipe, you just put everything in um, and then press knead for two minutes. So I'm going to take that approach because I'm lazy and pushed for time. So now I'm going to add in my flour straight away. There really isn't any, you, you can bring your water and your milk up to um, body temperature for optimal fermentation, but it's really not going to take much longer if you don't. So let's weigh in my flour. So this is just strong, regular strong white bread flour. You could, you, you could put wholemeal in here if you wanted to or do half and half. You can play about with it. Um, now, I'm actually just going to add in a little bit extra here. I'll tell you why. It's because, again, it's going to ask me to put an egg in. Um, oh, some butter, first of all. Okay, so this is a really nice, um, sort of almost like a brioche roll, I should imagine, because um, it's enriched with a little bit of butter and then eggs. So the butter goes in. Is that homemade butter, Lindsay? Um, why, yes, of course it is, Claire. <laughs> no, of course it isn't. I haven't had time to make butter today. I, I actually, I've got loads of butter frozen in the fridge and I forgot to, uh, frozen in the freezer rather, and I forgot to unfortunately defrost it. So it was nice and soft. So I've had to default to uh, a good old pack of butter. But um, yes, I should mention that you can make the most incredible butter in the Thermomix um, just from a, a big tub of double cream. It's cheaper when you make it yourself in the Thermomix. It takes less than two minutes um, and it, you end up with not just the be beautiful, fresh, creamy butter, which is obviously naturally unsalted. You can then add some salt, but you've got all the buttermilk as well that you can then use in baking. Um, so you know exactly what's in it. You've got the, um, the, the, you can feel very smug that you've made your own butter. You've made it really quickly. It's a great talking point, for example, at a dinner party, especially if you um, uh, sort of sex it up with lots of fancy flavours like you know, chopped herbs, garlic, uh, parsley, uh, cornichons, um, sun-dried tomatoes, you, you, know, you name it. In fact, there's a gorgonzola butter recipe on Cookie Do as well. So lots of stuff. Anyway, Claire, you've made me go completely off the subject now. So I'm going to um, continue with the recipe. Um, but yes, you've got it. We often do butter at these demos, but um, we've sort of done it to death a bit. So we're not doing it tonight. And then it's asking me to put an egg in. Now, um, I could, if I um, uh, sort of wanted to halve the egg. Now, lots of people say to me, well, how do you half an egg? Actually, it's quite simple. You just weigh it. A large egg weighs about 60 grams. Crack it into a bowl, fork it through so it's all mixed together and then just weigh out 30 grams. I'm far too lazy for that. So I'm going to put the whole thing in. And I have added an extra 50 grams of flour to compensate. Um, and then the, the dough is still 
uh, quite nice and usable. Right, so it, I need to put a little bit of salt in as well. So just put in half a teaspoon of salt, it prompted me. Um, and then I don't think, did I miss the bit where I had to put in, let me just go back to my recipe detail, because I think I might have missed the bit where I put in um, some Parmesan. Yes, here we go. So let's go back to that step. 40 grams reserved Parmesan mixture. So here is my little grated Parmesan. I'm just gonna sprinkle in 20 grams of it. There we go. And then the egg's gone in, the salt's gone in, I've put the lid on, and now you'll notice the knead function comes on. So this is a guided recipe. You don't have to think about what modes, processes you need to use. You don't have to think about how long it cooks for. The Thermomix does all that thinking for you, freeing up your brain to think about something else. Um, so all I'm gonna do now is just click start. And this is the big silver button here. Um, will uh, operate these, whichever dial is highlighted. So you always use this button to operate it. Um, and if you want to stop at any point, you can just press the silver button and then turn it again to start it. So, you know, you can still engage with it. You can use it manually. If you don't like a particular ingredient, you can leave it out. You can substitute for other ingredients. They are just guided recipes. Okay, now I'm gonna, just gonna show you how to shape the dough. So this is some dough that I made earlier. I love saying that. Here's one I made earlier. So like I'm on Blue Peter or Saturday Kitchen. And then I'm just gonna get a little bit of oil in my, on, on my hand. So I very rarely use extra flour when I'm shaping bread. Um, and the reason for that is if you try and shape a bread roll um, with lots of flour down on the work surface, you won't get the tension to get a really nice shape and it will just sort of roll around everywhere and you won't be able to sort of get a nice kind of neat tight roll out of it. I know Claire's going to say something rude now. I have to be very careful when I do these demos because Claire's got a filthy mind. <laughs> right, so here's my dough. What it wants me to do is um, divide it, I think, into, let me just review my recipe. Uh, is it eight portions? Okay, so this is going to be divided into four portions because I halved the recipe. Let's just put me down a little bit. Now, I could be really OCD about this. Um, and weigh each portion, um, just so that I get them exactly equal. But I'm not gonna do that tonight. I'm just gonna show you the basic principles. So these are lovely big rolls. Then I'm gonna shape them. So I'm gonna show you how I shape the rolls because actually there's a little trick that I use. Lots of people say that they're, 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 they're flat, their backs rather are very flat. And if you get flat backs, which we've all had at some point in another, and now our backs are nice and perky, um, this is how you do it. So I always, what they do is say, go round the clock with my dough like this, pulling it into the center, flat backs. Yes, I think we've done that joke to death actually. <laughs> and uh, so just pull it into a nice tight ball. See that, then I flip it over, then I'm just gonna sort of um, use what they call the claw grip, which you'll see on Bake Off with my hands, fingers, and just roll it. It's very satisfying this, I can see this for ages. Just roll it into a nice um, ball and then pop it onto a silicon mat. So let, I'll just do one more for you while you're there and then I'm gonna hand back over to Sarah because I think she's gonna um, want to get on the, her rice and vegetables. And then I'll just do the rest of them when they come out. So, and if you're feeling really confident, you can do two at a time like that. Okay, that's what Paul Hollywood always said. He, his dad used to say to him in the bakery that he had two hands and if he only used one of them, he'd only pay him half the, half the amount. There we go. So that's the next one. So I quite like my rolls to batch bake. So I put them generally quite close to each other. And when they rise, they are going to then um, sort of batch into one another. And then you can pull them apart like a tear and share loaf. All I'll do now with that is cover it with a piece of greased cling film. I'm just gonna stop my um, Thermomix kneading um, beside me because it might be slightly distracting for you. I'm gonna cover it with a bit of grease cling film and just allow it to rise now at room temperature for about 40 to 45 minutes. Um, and then hopefully by the end of the session, you'll see them just about to go in the oven and then we'll post the finished um, pictures at the end of the session. But I'm gonna just hand over to Sarah now um, to continue with the satay dish. Right. Yep, I've got, um, I've done the sauce that cooked for three minutes. Got this delicious 
satay sauce in there. And um, now it's asked me to weigh out the rice, wash the rice, asked me to weigh it out first in the simmering basket, then to wash the rice. And now it's asked me to put it back in to the bowl. Now I didn't wash out the bowl. It asked me to put in um, 1200 grams of water. So when it's cooking the rice, it will still get all that satay taste into it. Um, and then it's, so I've got the rice in the simmering basket there. I'll put the lid on. Again, so I haven't washed the bowl or anything. I take the measuring cup off so the steam can come through. And it's already asked me to weigh out the chicken. So I've just got the chicken in there. It says um, 600 grams, but I haven't got quite that because um, it's just two of us having it for tea tonight. If there's any leftovers, which it wasn't much of the other night when I tried it on Monday. The kids had two lots. So I even got a 10 out of 10 for my daughter, which is quite a rare occurrence. But this is now going to cook for 10 minutes. And that's it, that'll cook the chicken. Then I'll just give the chicken a bit of a stir around and then I'll add the veg. I've already weighed out the veg. Um, this is where you do have to cut the veg up a little bit. Um, so I've just made some little carrot batons. There's some broccoli in there, some um, cauliflower, some onion and some red pepper. And once this has had 10 minutes, I will put that onto the top of the dish, take the lid off, put that on the top of the dish, on top of the chicken, and then it will steam for a further 10 or 15 minutes. So that's me done for Lisa. Yeah, brilliant. And that is just a really efficient way of cooking, isn't it? Because not only are you sort of minimising the cooking equipment that you need to use, you're also minimising the energy because you're using all that latent heat from cooking the sauce and the rice, and then it's going to go on to steam the chicken and vegetables as well. Um, so it's energy efficient and it will save on your electricity bills. And whilst I'm cook while it's cooking the rice now, I can get just washing or tidying it, whatever done, or drinking cocktails. Yeah, yeah some cocktails. brilliant. So yeah, cool. Right, let's go over to Nicola now for her poached egg pot. Hey, hi. So I'm doing the poached egg pots with smoked salmon and avocado salsa, which I hadn't tried either before this week. Um, so I did try it also uh, just earlier in the week and they were just delicious. Oh, by the way, I apologise if you can hear them. Um, I know we have children passing through and dogs barking, but I think I might have two dogs snoring in the background here, so apologies. Um, so this is asking me, so now I'm just going to work through this recipe. Um, it's asking me here to put one tablespoon of spring onions in. So approximately, they're just cut into pieces. I haven't done anything with them yet. It's asking me to put 80 grams of smoked salmon in. So 80 grams of smoked salmon going in. Excuse fingers. And then 10 fresh baby spinach leaves also going in. And then it says insert measuring bowl into the mixing bowl lid. So we're putting the lid on. And it's asking me then to just turn it on for five seconds, at speed five. So it's just going to give it a bit of a chop. Now, this can be very varied. So the chopping, the, the blade can go at various speeds for various lengths of time. But this is all pre-programmed in. This is going to be a sort of coarse chop. Obviously, if you cooked it, if you chopped it for longer, it'd be much finer, but much more like a, a paste. And obviously, the longer you do it for, the closer it gets to a paste. So this is just going up to number five. And it's saying now, transfer the salsa into a bowl. So this is the salsa that's going to go with the final poached pots, but you can see it's just been finely chopped there, just enough to give it a bit of a, a bit, still have lots of texture to it. So I'm just going to transfer that into a bowl. Uh, and then we add it onto the, the poached uh, egg pots later. So I don't know if you saw um, for Sarah's, she used the uh, spatula, which is an amazing tool comes with the bowl um, and it's used for all sorts of things, obviously like that, but she also used it, I don't know if you noticed, to, to lift out the simmering basket. So brilliant, brilliantly organized piece of extra German engineering to this machine. Um, so the, the, the salsa is transferred and then it says place the bowl with the salsa onto the mixing bowl lid. So I'm now putting it to the top. So now I'm using the scales of this air mix and weigh into it 20 grams of lemon juice, which is just here. So 20 grams of lemon juice going into it. And then um, adding half an avocado, 
which has already been cut just into cubes. I'm just going to mix that in. So I've already chopped that and left it with a bit of um, lemon on it so it didn't go brown while I was waiting. And gently combine it with a spatula. So I'm just going to mix it up inside and then use it later. So then, then I'm coming on to doing this. So in, the, in the bottom of these um, spinach, these um, uh, egg, egg pots, these poached egg pots, is spinach. And I've just, I made that earlier because I don't think you really need to see me waiting for spinach to, to wilt. So we put 700 grams of water in here. So I didn't bother cleaning it out because it was just the smell was just going to, so I'm just going to forgotten to tear it then, rookie error. Yeah, so actually the, the recipe will tells you to put the spinach into the Varoma dish, doesn't it, Nicola? Yes. And then you can, and then you it steams for about four minutes, something like that. So no, it's just, really good. And then you can just drain it straight through the Varoma dish afterwards. Um, I'm just putting the water in, because we're going to use the water for the, for the poaching in a minute. Okay, so there, so it asked me to put the water in. I'm then going to, I would normally have put um, the measuring bowl on the top, um, have I missed something now? Have I? That's fine. So it's then, it's then heating this water up, which it then would use to steam. So we would put the spinach in this varoma, which comes on top. The spinach goes inside there. Uh, and then, we're, then it's being steamed for four minutes. And then you transfer the wilted spinach, which I did earlier, into the bottom of a couple of, this just makes two portions, so into a couple of ramekins, uh, ready to have everything else put on top. Um, so now we're now going to just add in, so it's as saying add in 30 grams of cream just in the bottom, see what's delicious. So um, it says pour 30 grams of cream in, I'm just going to make it a bit of a, so now, so this one actually hasn't got a scales on it, interestingly, so you can go back to find the scales if you choose, um, just back here, I mean, it doesn't really matter in this particular case, you could just give it a bit of a dash of cream, but if you wanted to weigh it, the scales are here, again, okay, the scale function, and you can just weigh in your 30 grams, which seems quite generous. This reminds me of my days. That's for, that's for two, I think, so you would only want a tablespoon in one, like 15 grams, is that right? I the cream spinach is so lovely if you're generous with the cream, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, so then we put the cream spinach in, and also, a, sorry, we've made so in South Africa when I lived there. We made lots of cream spinach. It was a classic sort of standard vegetable um, side dish. Uh, then you were also wanting to, so you can always go back to the recipe you were on by pressing the bookmark thing there. And uh, then you have a tablespoon of grated um, a cheese divided between two. So I'll also put that into both of those dishes. So that is just sitting now waiting. I can mix that up, and then we are going to crack an egg into the top of that. So I'm just going to literally mix it up a little bit in here. Let's mix the cheese and the, and the cream a little bit. I'm then going to crack an egg on the top. I'll do it for both of them in due course. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm just gonna crack an egg onto the top. So it's now, I don't know if you can just spend that without pouring the egg out. And then it's going to sit in the Varoma dish. And I'll do that with the other one as well. And then I'm going to turn it on, put the Varoma back into position and then turn it on to steam it. So it's just going to steam this where basically poach the eggs on top. And then I'll mix the salsa on top and add it all together. And that's, that's as easy as it is. So this could make a really fantastic, perhaps extravagant starter or just a lovely light lunch. Um, it's really, really delicious, but I'll, I'll assemble it all at the end. But just, just yes. a word so about- I think it makes a fab brunch dish. Yeah. So a word about eggs. So this is obviously poaching the eggs. The, there's a boiling eggs function, that's, as Lindsay's mentioned, that can make the absolute perfect poached eggs, however you like them. I always go for the medium soft, but you can have it how you like. But it, you can also do eggs in all sorts of ways. So you can poach them, obviously. You can do omelets in these, believe it or not because you use the, use the Varoma again and sort of steam it, but using um, baking parchment on the top. Um, and you can also do scrambled eggs um, using the, the, the machine itself. So actually eggs are easy, easy um, to use here in all sorts of forms. So I'll just, so I'll use this, this to steam that poach while you're moving on somebody else and it will all get assembled and be ready to show you shortly.
Brilliant. Okay, so Claire, if you want to just put it back to me for a couple of minutes and then I'll introduce Sarah. But yeah, I actually don't choose the boil egg function on my thermomix. I, I still steam my eggs in a simmering basket which sits inside. Uh, and the reason I do this is that if you steam your eggs, and again, you can determine how you want the yolk consistency from whether you want it soft, medium, soft, um, uh, firm or hard boiled. Um, they're super, super easy to peel. I don't know why, but if you steam them instead of boiling them, um, you can peel your eggs really easily, which is fantastic when you're doing things like, you know, hard boiled eggs for picnics or just lunches, um, or if you do scotch eggs as well. So let's go back to Sarah, are you ready for the next step now for the satay chicken? Um, or do you need a little bit more time? No, a little bit more time, please. It's still, it's still doing it. Okay, fine. Right, we're ahead of time, which is brilliant news. Um, so uh, let's go over to Linda now for the deconstructed lemon tarts, which just sound absolutely delicious and would make a fantastic dessert for a dinner party, wouldn't they, Linda? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so what I've done previously, um, it uh, the uh, machine has told me to um, uh, put the um, ginger biscuits, which I've used. You can actually um, cook uh, your own uh, ginger biscuits um, on a cookadoo recipe. Um, I bought some from supermarket, 49p for 300 grams, um, just in the interest of speed. And I've mixed those already um, in the Thermomix um, with some butter, which I did in the uh, machine as well. Um, and I'm now going to run through doing the uh, lemon curd. So the machine is asking me to put in 75 grams of a granulated sugar. Um, but um, I've already <clears throat> put the granulated sugar through the machine and made it into caster sugar, just so that it um, makes it a little bit smoother. So I'm gonna put the 75 grams in now. <coughs> Uh, and then it's uh, then what I've done. I've um, previously I've sorted out the um, lemon. So you take the rind off the lemon, peel the rind off the lemon, and then um, you've got your own lemon uh, lemon mix there as well. So it's asking me to put those in. So put that in now, and insert the put the lid on. And the top on the bowl. And I need to turn this to speed 10 for um, 20 seconds. And this, I think this is making um, icing sugar, isn't it? Is it grinding up the lemon rind and the uh, granulated sugar together, Linda? Yes. Yeah. Is. Yeah. So again, another sort of benefit of the Thermomix is you only need to buy one type of sugar, which is regular white sugar, unless you need to use brown sugar, of course. But with, from, from your regular cheap white granulated sugar, which is 62p a kilo, you can then make caster sugar in two seconds at speed nine. Um, and then you can make icing sugar about 10 seconds at speed 10. Um, so that saves you having to have three different bags in your cupboard. So again, really handy for people that are space compromised. Okay, so it's just told me to scrape down the sides, uh, which I've done. And then I go next and I need to add um, two large eggs, which I've already got in here. So I'll put those in now. There we go. So I've got the two large eggs in. So I'm going to go next. 50 grams of unsalted butter, which, as I said, I made earlier today. So put that in. And then I'll do next. And the juice of one lemon, which I've got in here. There we go. Um, so that's approximately, it says 40 grams. And then pop the lid back on. Yep, go next. And that is now telling me to turn it to speed six for 10 seconds.
Okay, so that's done. And I need to scrape down the sides again, just because it's uh, quite, see, just scrape everything down, down the sides. Mixed it in nicely, looks good. So put the lid back on as I've done. And now it needs to um, cook for four minutes at 80 degrees and it's on speed four. Yeah, so isn't that amazing? That's lemon curd cooked from scratch in four minutes. Um, which again is it gives you sort of major points, doesn't it? When you can give it away to friends or you know, just take it as a little gift if you're going around to somebody's house for dinner. Um, and uh, you know, again, you know exactly what's in it. Um, it's not, it's just made from scratch, from fresh ingredients, um, nothing else added, um, and tastes absolutely delicious. Um, so yeah, it, it's I love making lemon curd and the same principle with jam actually. You can make strawberry jam in exactly the same way. Um, you just Peel, chop up all your fruit, take the green bits out, shove it in the thermomix with a load of sugar and the thermomix will just cook it away in about between 20 and 30 minutes, depending on how much you've got in there. Um, and then all you need to do is come back and jar it up at the end. Super easy. Okay, so are we going to go back to Sarah now, I think, to check on the satay chicken? Is it ready? Yes. Um, what I found... Um, the other day, actually, was it was the because you're filling the thing up with 120 grams of um, sorry, 1200 grams of water, then you're putting the rice in and the chicken. It actually needs a little bit longer cooking time in the chicken than, um, than it says. But anyway, so I gave you an extra five minutes and then it's telling me to stir the contents. And then I'm going to insert the Verema tray with all these delicious chopped veg on. I did earlier. So we've got carrots, 100 grams of carrots, tenderloin broccoli, cauliflower, red pepper, brown onion, close the lid. And then next, and then that is going to now steam for 15 minutes. Then all I do is I've got some sugar snap peas here, I'll add them um, and then add the chicken and the satay sauce all into the bowl, um, I'll empty the bowl, sorry, but I'll get that far, I've only done it once before. But I think you add it, um, yeah, all actually into this bowl and stir it all up. And then the rice, you use the rice and I will produce a lovely, easy satay chicken. From scratch, it's incredible, From isn't scratch. it? Without really any effort at all. <laughs> any effort, and you don't have any additives, no preservatives, it's all, fresh and it tastes so fresh and we found now by eating this food from fresh and if you do go back to you know having something like a, not we haven't had a takeaway since we've had the third mix though we did on the first week um compare them and afterwards on that butter chicken which is our favorite you know from a takeaway you feel quite stuck and have that bloaty feeling afterwards but when you're cooking from scratch from fresh with all these lovely tasty meals it tastes fresher and you don't, you really don't get that bloated, sort of stuffed feeling afterwards. And it's and so, it's so much better that. and cheaper as well to do it like that. A lot, lot cheaper. Even better. Yeah. Great. Okay, well, let's go over. So while that's cooking away now, we'll let you put your feet up, go and have a glass of wine or, you know, whatever you're going to do, clear up the kitchen. Maybe do something else in the other Thermomix because we can't resist. And we're going to go back over to Linda, who's going to show us how to do the topping uh, for her deconstructed lemon tart. So this is going to be the meringue topping. You're on mute again, Linda. <laughs> Pressing the machine. OK, so can you hear me now? No. Yeah, we can hear you. We can oh, hear right. you. Okay, that's good because it's just finished. <laughs> so, 
Right, okay. So basically it's telling me to transfer the uh, lemon curd to sterilised jars, but obviously I'm not using it for that, I'm using it for the curd. So I'll be putting that onto the biscuit um, crumb uh, shortly. So I can take that off there. Right. One of the handy things about... Go on, uh, let, let, let's, let us have a look at it, Linda. Let's have a look at the curd. I show off your curd. So, ooh, so I don't know whether you can see that in there. Yep. Um, yeah we can it's really Delicious. nice so that's great um but obviously one of the good things that you can do as well when you order your thermomix is you can get extra jugs and so i've got an extra one here which is ready for me to do the meringue so i'm now going to put that a clean one in there and go to my recipe um for the right so now I've just got to get my recipe back up for the meringue. So here we go, we start. So just going to work my way through uh, the uh, the recipe until I get to the bit where I'm now going to do the meringue. So Linda, if you go back, if you go to the recipe detail, pull up the recipe detail by clicking the three dots at the top of the screen. Okay. And then you can scroll through if you use the little down arrow. Right, hang on. It'll be there second, am I? Sorry. <laughs> right, I'm there. Okay, but you, you can actually select the step that you want to from that overview screen. Oh, I can see. So you it. don't I have to. Yeah, you don't have to. Yeah, 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 yeah. you don't have to flick through Rest it. Detail. Okay, continue. Right. Okay. It's taking me through. <laughs> Sorry about this. And the reason that this is happening is I asked actually Linda to do a really quick lemon curd recipe. So this is the four minute lemon curd recipe. So <laughs> if you work the recipe through on the deconstructed lemon tart recipe, it will take you through it step by step through the lemon curd, but the lemon curd takes about 10 minutes in that recipe. So I asked Linda for this demo just to do the really quick one. So that's kind of thrown her out slightly because now she's got yeah, to go just... back and find the, the place where she kind of left off from. Right, okay, I'm there now. Um, so it's asking me to uh, put in uh, 90 grams of um, plaster sugar, which is there. Okay. Just put the lid a bit more. Just one bit more, that's it. Um, <clears throat> so then the next one is, it says remove the mixing bowl. Oh, sorry. So I've done that wrong. I should have left it in there, but that's fine. Because it tells you to weigh it out separately, and I've already done that, so that's fine. So I'm now going to put in the um, the uh, whisk onto the machine, and uh, then add uh, three egg whites um, from medium eggs, which I have separated already. and 30 grams of freshly squeezed lemon juice which i've got here as well okay so uh, the next part is that uh, without the measuring cup which i put this in so leave that open because i'm going to be putting the sugar in there as it whisks around so it's asking me to turn uh, the machine to four and that's for four minutes and to gradually add the sugar um, into the um, meringue or the, the egg whites so I'm going to do that just get a spoon and put that through and so you'll notice here that Linda hasn't put her measuring cup in so it will say without the measuring cup the measuring cup is this little insert here so it'll tell Linda not to use the measuring cup and then she can use the hole in the bowl just to add the sugar through. So we're going to let Linda do that um, without watching her for four minutes or so. And then we'll go over to uh, Taruna for the coleslaw and homemade mayonnaise. OK, so I'm going to start with the mayonnaise. So I'll put the jug in. Um, I've already... I've already weighed out the oil, so I'm not going to do that. 
So now I'm going to add the egg. You just put a whole egg in. And it's at room temperature. And then it says one teaspoon of lemon juice or a teaspoon of vinegar. I've got a teaspoon of lemon juice. Um, I am going to put some mustard, it's optional, but I think it will give it a nice flavour, so I'm just going to do that. So I'll put that in. Uh, two pinches of black pepper, just going to quickly swirl that in. Uh, so half a teaspoon of salt, but I'm just going to whirl some in. And I can taste it later to do its taste. Then it says to insert the measuring cup. So I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to leave it slightly loose because I'm going to be pouring the oil into it to make the mayo while it's running. I've already weighed out the oil to make it easier for the demo. <laughs> Now we're drizzling the oil in, and we'll make the mayo in four minutes. So I'm just going to, while Tarina's doing that, I'll just show you what Tarina's doing actually with our clever, the lid of our measuring bowl. So these are, um, as we've mentioned before, a German appliance, it, the, the design is second to none on this machine. Lots of the different the parts, the accessories of the machine, they're designed to be multifunctional. They're designed for cramped spaces in, in, in cramped kitchens. Um, a lot of us actually, when we travel, we take our Thermomix with us in, in motorhomes. It's great for going camping with because it's like a portable kitchen. It's all you ever need. So you can use the simmering basket, for example, as a sieve. You can use the Varoma, which is the steaming attachment as a colander. Um, the spatula is designed not, not only to be used when you're making um, food inside the Thermomix, um, but it hooks into the simmering basket. It, it, it turns it into like a little handle to remove the simmering basket with when um, the food is hot, so you don't burn your fingers. But also we've got this really clever design here. So you can, I don't know if you can just see, if I sort of lift up that measuring cup slightly there and the lid, there's a little hole. So if we have that up and then we pour all the oil onto this like recess on the top here. And then the, what it will do was it will, the, the, it slightly angled downwards this recess. So whatever you have in here, it's just gonna drip very slowly into the bowl. So Usually when you make mayonnaise, you're there with a sort of an electric blender and you have to very uh, carefully sort of drizzle the oil in. It's a little bit laborious. There's a high margin of error um, that can go wrong. But actually with the Thermomix, it takes out all of that margin of error um, and um, it will produce you top quality, beautiful tasting mayonnaise um, in about two minutes. So let's go back to Tarina. Just there you go. Mayonnaise, and this is the first time I've made it, homemade mayonnaise. I would never have attempted it in another machine. And again, a lot cheaper than buying it ready-made in a jar because it's the cost of an egg, 20p, um, and 250 grams of, of, of vegetable oil. So it, it costs absolute peanuts to make a jar of mayonnaise, and it tastes so much nicer. Uh, than the stuff that comes out of jars, which again has got other ingredients, additives in there to preserve them. So that's the mayonnaise being poured out. I'm pouring it out now. I'm going to leave about uh, two tablespoons in because I'm going to use it to make the coleslaw now. And all I need to do to make the chunky coleslaw is add the vegetables or the coleslaw in, which I've already cut up. Ready prepared. I just need to find the recipe. I finish that. All I'm going to do is go to my recipe, go to my recipes. I've created some collections. I've got a cooking demo one because we do demos. It's got the chunky coleslaw. Start cooking. And it's asking me to cut pieces. I've already done all that. Thank you. 
And I have to say, I I always um, I make a chunky whatever I've got in the fridge coleslaw, uh, which is brilliant to use up any ends oh, of. Uh, yeah, so I've already added them. Yeah. And now. Okay, it's asking me to mix the mayo with the sugar in that. I'm just going to chuck everything in. So I've already made, just made the mayo, so I don't think I need that. So I'm just going to add the vegetables in now. And that's got red cabbage, carrot, apple, red onion, and we just cut it into pieces. It tells you how much to put in. I've read it out already for the ease of use in the demo. And it's just telling me to turn to speed selector 4.5 for one second, which I'm going to do. Transfer to a serving pan. Yeah, that's quite chunky, so I'll probably need to do it again for a few more seconds. So but I'll show you when I've done it, when you go to somebody else and I'll do it in the meantime, then I'll show well, you. My, my husband would love that. He always moans that I cut up my coleslaw too finely. So uh, oh, right. that was definitely the recipe that I need for him. Okay. And yeah, I mean, it's it's... As Michaela said, you can add in any in any ingredients that you've got, really. Um, you don't have to add an apple. You don't have to add the sugar, actually. I, I don't quite... I, I've, ne I've never put sugar in my coleslaw, um, but uh, that's an option, obviously. And Michaela's got a different version. So yeah. anything that you want to put in there goes in. Right, let's go back over to um, Sarah very quickly and see if the satay chicken's ready or is it not. No, I have 43 seconds left on the steaming. Okay, perfect. So let's go to let's go to let's go to Michaela, who's always on drinks duty, actually, in, in, in real life and on these demos. And what she's are you doing, trying to say? Actually, we thought you're doing a non non-alcoholic uh, oh, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But don't you worry, Lindsay Sadler. I have got the diluting liquid here to go with it. So hello everybody, welcome to the Duchess's Kitchen. By the way, I just want to give a big call out to Linda, who was originally my customer, for doing that deconstructed lemon meringue pie on her first ever demo. You are my hero. Um, anyway, everybody, as Lindsay said, I'm going to do the watermelon lemonade, which I think with the summer holidays coming up, is a really great drink to do. And again, the Thermomix, it just shows you how simple and versatile the thermomix can be so here it's telling me now it's an american recipe so it's flicked into doing imperial measurements and because i'm following a guided recipe don't have to worry about it just press the buttons and it does it all for me so it's telling me to weigh in three to four ounces of sugar now that to me sounds about 80 grams of sugar and there's no way i would give my family that much so i'm just going to halve that and put in two ounces and I know my watermelon is really quite ripe because it's very juicy. So it'll get lots of natural sugars from there. Next, it's saying add 24 ounces of watermelon chopped up. Again, I'm slightly over just because it was a lovely big watermelon I got off the market this morning. Easy, Claire. <laughs> Next one, it's saying, right, eight ounces of lemons peeled, chopped and taken everything out. But I've kind of quickly done that, just ch chopping them up there. And then it's asking for 10 ounces of water. And um, that will be about a litre of water, won't it? Will it? Something like that? No, nope, not quite, just a little bit. All right, next, um, 10 ice cubes. So this is gonna be really noisy when I'm just making this pulp. Press next, put the measurement. Claire back says, on. is that water or is that gin? <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, am, <laughs> I am making one. And now it's going to really grind them and it's going to be really noisy for one minute. So just let me come over here and then see if I can. <laughs> can you hear me? Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, we can still hear you. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. So some other recipes that they have is they also have the regular lemonade, which is basically 
fucking half, three ordinary lemons and the water and a bit of sugar, and you've got a homemade animal. So, so you can control the sugar content. In the I literally just did one on Tuesday at the New Testament dinner. If you couldn't believe it, we got carried away with making many different versions. Actually, Michaela, we're sort of struggling to hear you over that. I think where it's going on for so long. Yeah, but, um, yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah, so. I'll, I'll just take it for two minutes or not even quite two minutes. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, 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 the really quick lemonade is brilliant. We always do it at demos. People are always amazed. You chuck in uh, two or three whole lemons, um, some granulated sugar, which you grind into icing sugar to start with. So it dissolves um, a litre of water and then you put you put it onto turbo for about, I think it's two or three blasts of turbo or just run it for sort of two, two seconds. Um, and then you put your simmering basket in and uh, filter your lemonade into a jug. It is done in literally, uh, well, uh, under two minutes, not even two minutes, like not even a minute. It tastes delicious. So it's a, a bit like that lemonade that you get at Pizza Express or Prezzo, the old fact that like the Sicilian lemonade that's still, it costs pennies. I often buy lemons on the market or lemons in Asda that have been reduced. Um, and I can make myself a litre of pure, beautiful, old fashioned lemonade uh, yeah. with from fresh ingredients for about 20p um so that's great has it has it finished grinding yeah, now Michaela? it's finished Brilliant. grinding finished grinding and absolutely i'm with you i'm just um the lemonades are great especially if you've got overripe lemonades now another tip the instructions just said um just pour into a pitcher and serve but as lindsay was saying there and especially if you've got people who don't like bits in anything you know what i mean you know we've all got them at home haven't we husbands kids granddads uh, anyway so just put your simmering basket in and literally all you need to do is pour that through the simmering basket and that will capture any other tiny little bits that you probably that might not have got whizzed up it's highly unlikely there might be a little bit of pulp left in here but it'll make it really really quite refreshing Oh, no, I can be careful. I'm gonna. And uh, there we have it, really. There is a lovely picture of water lemon lemonade um, using an overripe um, watermelon, which would have gone in the, well, it wouldn't have gone in the bin in this house because no food goes in the bin here. We'll make something of it. Um, but yeah, you've got that. Um, this uh, watermelon lemonade, I can tell you the price because I um, had to buy the watermelon today and uh, I asked the guy on the stall, do you have an overripe one? He charged me a pound. So here we have some artisan watermelon lemonade that if you go to the store and there's a litre here would probably cost you £1.50, £2 just for a 330ml. And there you go. You control the sugar and control the taste. But more importantly, for the adults, you can control all the content. Thank you for watching. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, Claire, if you just want to put it back to me. And actually, on the subject of what you can do with watermelon that is um, overripe, um, I make with my children, we did one this, e this evening when we came in from school, a watermelon slushy. It is absolutely delicious. So I had a watermelon that was going past its best. We'd had it around. The children had got bored with it. I cut it all up at the weekend and just froze it on a single layer in a tray and then bagged it up. Um, and from there, I just chucked in, I ground up some uh, sugar with some basil and some lime zest. Um, and then I added uh, frozen strawberries. So again, you can buy your own strawberries cheaply on the market, freeze them yourself on an open, freeze them in a layer um, so they don't stick together. Chuck some strawberries in, a frozen watermelon, some water um, and some lime or lemon juice. And then you blitz it for um, about a minute. I think, and you end up with like a slush puppy, a watermelon slush puppy. I tell you what, it is absolutely delicious. The children go mad for it. It's really healthy. Again, you can control the sugar content. So if you want to reduce that as well, you can. Um, but, you know, in essence, they are just having the goodness of the watermelon, the strawberries. You can put some frozen grapes in if you want to. I didn't have any, so I didn't. Um, and then the basil, you know, what's not to love? And it tastes and looks absolutely this is beautiful pink color so i think we have got to the end are we is, is cutty ready now um to show us her finished uh, satay chicken brilliant let's go to okay. cutty we're not quite finished yet so we're putting everything together now so i've got the sugar snap peas in there and then it's telling me to um also add the reserve satay sauce which has been keeping nice and warm in my thermos server 
which is brilliant. I, I did see someone ask if they were selling them, so thanks for stirring that hornet's nest up. Sorry, I know, I know. Some people, yeah, perhaps just got one, but um, oh, satay smells delicious. And if, if you find that the turmeric and the satay sauce does just like stain your lid slightly, just pop it in the sunlight um, and that gets rid of sta any staining. And then the, the sauce and the chicken and the bread. So I've got the chicken, oh, I'm steaming up my glasses. <laughs> I've got the chicken. So it's all going into one now. And these lovely, lovely steamed veg. Oops, I've just lost a carrot. There we go. It's quite hot. Now, it is going to just stir this now for literally five minutes. And it's got the blade in reverse, so it doesn't cut into the chicken at all. And you can tell that by the little blade. I know, I'm sorry, it's the light on my um, screen. You can't see my screen very well. But basically you press the little, you don't need to do on this recipe because it automatically does it. But um, when you see the green arrow, when it's green, it means the blade's going in reverse. So basically that's just gonna stir that at 90 degrees for five minutes, then it's done. I've already taken the rice out um, in the simmering basket and I'm keeping it warm. And then all I did was empty the water out. I didn't need to clean the bowl again. I just chucked the water out. And that's then when I put the sugar sap peas and everything else back in there. And then it's just going to stir up for five minutes. And then we can have our tea. Yeah. And dinner. And actually, you know, you don't need to worry about those instructions because it would tell you to, de 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 to get rid of the water, won't it? It tells yeah. you exactly yeah, yeah. what to do step everything. by step. So you don't have to think about a single thing. Okay, so let me just, if you can come back to me, Claire, very quickly. Um, so here are my rolls. You see they've risen beautifully. They've started to sort of nestle into one another. Um, and, and that's what I like to see. So they, they've almost sort of doubled in size. They're nice and puffy. So I'm just going to bake these. I'm going to pop them straight in the oven now. I mean, it is, it is ridiculous how easy it is to make bread in your Thermomix. Most um, recipes will only need for two minutes, actually. This one was a little bit longer because it was enriched. Um, and I'm just going to pop them into my oven, 180 degrees, for about 15 minutes. So let me just um, time 15 minutes on there. Um, and then I think we're just going to go round to Linda. Have you finished the meringue? Um, I and have. Are you assembling your tarts? Let's have a little look at what they look like. Yeah, so, so fantastic. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> yep. Wow. So what I've done, uh, just um, I can show you the meringue. Um, and literally that is so smooth and uh, silky, um, which, um, you know, is absolutely good. I've never made meringue like that ever. Um, and um, I'm going to put them on top of these just so that you can actually see um, the lovely layers and everything in there. Um, I don't have um, a blowtorch, which it says, if you haven't got a blowtorch to just go over the top to put, um, put them under the grill. So I've done, I did one in a ceramic dish and there we have it. So nice and brown. Oh and yeah, looking looks really lovely. So and yeah, so yeah. that's me done, thank you. Brilliant, well done Linda, great first day. And should we go to Tarina just to show you the coleslaw? Have you managed, have you got that into a bowl yet, Tarina, that you can show us? I am. Hold on. I got so carried away to take photos. I've written the fridge already. Give me just a second. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. Let's have a look at this coleslaw. I mean, how fantastic that you can make the mayonnaise and make the coleslaw in a matter of seconds. So there you go. That's my coleslaw. Yeah. How easy was that? Delicious. Yeah, absolutely perfect. Okay, brilliant. Claire, if you just want to put it back to me um, and I'll just wrap up. So thank you everybody for watching. Um, we've, we've only spent, well, it was just about an hour, I think, cooking and look what we've managed to produce. So hopefully we've given you a great overview of the Thermomix. We've made a drink, we've made a main meal, we've made a pudding, we've made a little start or a light brunch dish um, and we've made some bread to go alongside it. So that just shows you the, how awesome the Thermomix is. Um, and, you know, this machine is not just for sort of domestic uh, chefs like ourselves. Uh, it is loved by professionals all around the world. Um, so you will often see it on programmes like uh, The Great British Menu, Master Chef, 
snack masters, you'll see it in the background in professional kitchens, commercial kitchens. Now you know what you're looking at. Um, you will become like the rest of us and avidly spotting Thermomixes on all the cookery programmes that you watch and in every uh, Michelin starred kitchen um, as well. So, um, and the chefs love it because of the precise ability to temperature control the food. Uh, nothing quite blends or emulsifies like a Thermomix. They are really, really in high demand. So it's not just for people that can't cook. It's for people that love to cook as well. It's for people that are time poor. It's for people who want to push their creativity a little bit. Um, it's for kids, you know, it makes cooking with kids really fun. And it's also great for people that have kind of just lost a bit of their cooking mojo, want a bit of inspiration to step up their game a bit. Um, and it just allows you to put that fun back into cooking and cook more if you are somebody like me that loves to spend time in the kitchen. Um, so uh, for, for just to wrap up now, um, in, if people are interested in purchasing, I'm just going to run through this month's um, special offer um, or the offer that we've got on to Monday, which we're all very excited about because it's something that we don't have often um, and it makes a thermom, it's really affordable. So what you've hopefully seen over the course of this evening is lots of little different ways in which you can save money with a the Thermomix. And that is what the Thermomix is all about, really. Um, yes, it, it has got a high price. And yes, it is what puts a lot of people off to start with. And from experience, I would say to you, hand on heart, um, please don't worry about the cost. We know that you will get that back in bucket loads uh, right from the first week when you start to use it. You've heard Michaela talk about how much money she saved. I would say on average, my customers are saving between sort of 30 and 50 pounds a week when they're using their Thermomix to its full potential because all of a sudden you start making these things that you would never have normally considered even things like yogurts I mean my kids would just devour Muller Corners uh, the Muller -Cor Corner addiction was costing us loads of money now I make a yogurt of, of, of um, identical sort of taste really and just better quality than a Muller Corner in the Thermomix and it, it, I, I, I make it for less than half the price so I'm saving lots of money in that way and then you add together all the nut butters and the breads and the main meals that you can make instead of buying takeaways um, and you will end up saving yourself a small fortune. So the Thermomix costs £1,149 with a blade cover and we do recommend you get a blade cover um, purely because if you get halfway through a recipe and it says insert blade cover and you think oh I haven't got that um, you'll be a bit disappointed. The blade cover is only £19. It's the only optional accessory we offer as well. So it's well worth adding it on just for the sake of completion. Um, so with the blade cover, it's 1168. And yes, at the moment, we have this amazing offer where we were doing interest-free credit on both the one-year finance plan and the two-year finance plan. So on a one-year plan, it's about £96 a month. On the two-year finance plan, it's £48 a month, which works out at £12 a week. Now, if I would be amazed if you don't save double, if not triple, if not more than that, uh, on a regular basis, week in, week out, and you'll come to absolutely love and rely on this machine like all of us. Um, also, when you buy a Thermomix, it's not like when you buy an appliance from John Lewis, you know, you sort of walk out the store with it in a box um, and then you're left on your own um, and it's down to you to read the instruction manual and sort it all out. When you buy a Thermomix and you buy it through an advisor, and this is a really important point actually, always buy your Thermomix through an advisor. You can go online and buy direct on our website. If you do that, you won't be offered the support of an advisor and you also won't be offered the monthly customer promotion either, which are only available through advisors. So if you want interest-free, you will have no choice uh, but to order through an advisor and the benefits of that of the customer are you get the support you get somebody who is your point of contact who is there to walk you through the setup process who is there to answer your questions um, and, and, and as part of my group on Facebook you are part of a huge community of owners um, who are all there to support and inspire each other and the Facebook group I think I've got other customers on here um, that aren't our personal customers, but we've welcomed them into the group um, because they, they have learned a lot and they contribute to our group as well. And it is a really, really great safe space to learn about your Thermomix and to get lots of support and inspiration. Um, so you don't really get that when you buy other appliances, um, actually. And it is a really just lovely place um, to find out more about your Thermomix um, and to really be able to get the most out of it.
So don't let the cost put you off. It's £12 a week on interest free. It makes cooking fun. It's great to inspire yourself, inspire kids. You can do so much stuff with it that you never thought possible. And we also give you a 14 day money back guarantee as well. Um, so you get that peace of mind to try it at home for 14 days before you um, finally make up your mind. Um, but I have to warn you, uh, I think within the team, we don't have a single person that has sent their Thermomix back. And we have created hundreds of Thermomix owners uh, since I have been in the business. Um, because if you've got an advisor that uh, is as equally as passionate as I am about this machine, um, then you will not want to be letting it go. In fact, you'll be wanting to add more of them. Um, and then, you know, if, you, if we've got owners out there or even people out there that are thinking, you know, they, they've loved this evening, uh, they'd be interested in finding out a little bit more about uh, becoming an advisor, then we also are always looking for people who are either love cooking or hate it um, to join our team and become Thermomix advisors. And there you get paid to spread your love and passion for Thermomix. And we don't think there's anything better than that, actually. Um, we have a great time doing what we do. It's very sociable. It's great fun. And we get paid at the end of the day for it as well. And so you earn another machine if you get yes. those targets. <laughs> yeah exactly you can earn yourself um, another thermomix which um, is fantastic and what's better than one thermomix well obviously two or if, if not three i've got one sat in the garage and actually i'd quite like to add a fourth one um but there we go if we do that i am gonna have to sell one um but i would like my a third tm6 to have a play with um and um so if the other thing to say is if you are interested in um sort of finding out more about the thermomix then have a look at Cookie Do. Cookie Do, the app is free. You can download it from the app store onto a mobile phone, tablet, or you can look at it through the website. It's free when you register um, for 28 days. You then get six months free with your machine and it's 30 pounds a year thereafter. So it's really good. If, I always recommend to sort of potential owners and new owners to get straight onto Cookie Do and just look at the wealth of recipes that are available to you. Um, so let's let's go back over to Sarah, I think, just to show the satay kitchen. Sat kitchen. And that's like Saturday yeah. kitchen, satay chicken. There we go. Satay chicken. Um, recipe so, at the end. Fantastic. Look at that. So and there's plenty more left in the bowl, which um, will do us. Like, I did cut the, um, the ingredients down a little bit, but um, I've got, oh, I just want a good excuse to eat it for lunch tomorrow. So that's all, all done in there. Yeah. We're very much looking forward to tomorrow because we're going around our Motown for the weekend. So I'll be taking my little friend here and um, I'll be doing a risotto over the weekend and some pizza dough. And um, yeah, it just, it just makes yeah. the fact when we go away just easier. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And let's go to Nicola finally for the poached egg pots because we haven't shown her poached egg pots. Yeah. Uh, there you go. They are nicely finished off. I think we can talk about see those. They've cooled down a little bit, but I suspect they're still just perfectly runny. And I'm looking forward to finishing this so I can eat at least one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Fantastic. And my rolls, unfortunately, are still in the oven, but I will post pictures on the group a little bit later. Um, so we hope that you've enjoyed that. We've just run over slightly. Mind you, it's only two minutes past nine and we didn't get started um, until about well, just after 25 to 8. So I think we've done pretty well um, to get through all of that in the last hour and a half. We hope you've really enjoyed it. Um, if you have any questions, uh, Claire, do you want to just stop the recording actually um, for me? And then if anybody's got any questions, please feel free to ask them now um, or pop 